why Chris Bosch is one of the most underappreciated players of all time. Unfortunately, Chris Bosch has suffered blood clots the last two seasons, so I wanted to go over Chris Bosch's time in the NBA because we really don't know how he'll come back into the league after being out for two seasons. Personally, I hate to see any athlete not be able to play the games that they love. Not to mention, blood clots are a very, very serious issue, so not only do I want to see Chris Bosch healthy as a player, I want to see him healthy as a person. Now, in this video, I'm going to mainly talk about Chris Bosh outside of the Miami days. I'll talk a little bit about him when he played for Miami with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, but I mainly want to talk about Bosh in his Toronto days because a lot of people don't realize how good Bosh was back with the Raptors. Those were the days that I think people forget. I don't think young kids that watch Chris Bosh now know how good he really was. So here's why Chris Bosh is one of the most underappreciated players of all time. In this video, we'll discuss the role that Chris Bosh has had to play, we'll discuss the sacrifices he's had to make, we'll discuss the LeBron James style of basketball and how it affects his big men, primarily Chris Bosh and Kevin Love, and we'll compare Chris Bosh against some of the greatest big men of all time. You'll be surprised with the numbers I'll show you. What we won't talk about, well, I'm not going to talk about the memes and the hate comments towards Chris Bosh because, well, we talk about stats and facts on this channel not memes made by someone who strongly opposes another person. Anyway, to start off, let me give you some backstory. It's important to remember that Chris Bosch is one of the first in a generation of new big men. The mold of the big man has changed throughout the years in the NBA. We all know that. Now, it's debatable whether the big man has vanished or whether the big man has evolved. But what I do know is that Chris Bosch is one of the new big men. He doesn't play like Shaq. He doesn't play like David Robinson. He doesn't play like Tim Duncan or Patrick Ewing. He plays facing up to the basket, like Dirk Nowitzki and Kevin Garnett. So when I hear people say that Chris Bosh isn't a great rebounder, he's soft, he can't play defense, he's not tough, I just think that's so stupid. He isn't meant to play like that. He's made to play as a power forward who, for majority of his career, has played at center. And I'll get into that later on. Dating back to his Toronto days, Bosch has been one of the best mid-range shooters in the league, regardless of his size. When he moved to Miami, he redefined himself as a player. He slowly expanded his game outwards, and as that transition occurred, his numbers and reputation took a hit. Like I said before at the start of the video, when I said that I dislike when people say that Chris Bosch is soft and he can't rebound, let me share something with you. I'm going to use the Kevin Love and Chris Bosch comparison, simply because they both started on different teams, being the stars of their respective teams, obviously Kevin Love in Minnesota and Chris Bosch in Toronto, then they both joined LeBron James in his super team and the numbers of those two players dramatically drop. Let me explain why for those that don't understand. Let's look at the best rebounding years with some of the greatest big men of all time. Shaq's highest rebounding number is 14 in 38 minutes in his first season. Ewing is 12 rebounds in 37 minutes. David Robinson, 13 rebounds in 37 minutes. Kevin Garnett, 14 rebounds in 39 minutes. And now Chris Bosh, 11 rebounds in 36 minutes. And Kevin Love, 15 rebounds in 36 minutes. So as you can see, the numbers that Kevin Love and Chris Bosh are putting up are comparable to some of the best NBA big men of all time. So the notion that they are soft and weak and don't go for rebounds must be for a specific reason. There's no way that Kevin Love could go from averaging 15 rebounds to under 10 without anything happening to him. That's just no way, so let me explain. To go from averaging 11 rebounds or 15 rebounds per game to dropping down to under 10 rebounds in a season because they are trash or no good, for those that need more clarification, here's my breakdown. Both Kevin Love and Chris Bosh were superstars. I'm pretty sure we can all agree with that. The stats don't lie and we should all know that before they join their respective big threes. They were no doubt NBA superstars. The thing is, once they join LeBron James' big three, they became that of a role player. A role player meaning they play their role for the team and that's all they do. Which can be hard for fans to understand since they both came from being the first option on the floor to suddenly the third option on the floor. They weren't supposed to produce like superstars in these big threes. They're meant to do anything to help the team win. This is what happens in any super team or big three. Players will drop in stats. Just wait. It'll happen to the Golden State Warriors this season as well. Mark my words. It's the roles that both Kevin Love and Chris Bosh had to adapt to, which is why the stats of both of these superstars 
dropped after joining the big three. Love went from averaging 26 points and 12.5 rebounds to 16 points and 9.7 rebounds after joining LeBron James. Chris Bosh went from averaging 24 points and 11 rebounds to 18.7 points and 8 rebounds. Notice the huge decrease in numbers after both players joined the big threes? It's not that they are bad players, it's the fact that they had to adapt to a completely new role. In order to play with LeBron James, no matter how good the guy is, we all know that LeBron James is the greatest player of our generation. Okay, it's simple, it's fact. LeBron James is no doubt the greatest player of our generation. But in order to play with LeBron James, you have to adjust to how he will win you the game. That's what happens when you're the best player on the planet. What LeBron needs is catch and shoot players. He needs big men that can shoot the ball. It's known as a fact that LeBron James' best asset in basketball is his will to attack and finish at the ring, not his jump shot which can be unreliable at times. To utilize LeBron James to his fullest, you can't have big men that can't shoot the ball, because the opposition big men will just help on the drive of LeBron James and either help change LeBron's shot, or LeBron will kick it out to the big man, but the guy won't hit the shot. So really, you need a big man that can shoot. So that's why LeBron needs catch and shoot players in his offense, which is what Bosch and Love both became. This is also the major reason why the rebounding numbers for both players drop so dramatically. When talking about Chris Bosch, it's not because he's soft, or he's not tough anymore, or he's not good at rebounding. You need to understand that it is his or was his role to space the floor and get open for LeBron James or a Dwayne Wade kickout. Bosch's best asset is simply his presence. As a 6'11 forward who can shoot from virtually anywhere, including the occasional 3 ball, he stretches the floor and makes James and Wade's job a lot easier. Bosch literally spent hours upon hours in the gym developing his 3 point shot to help the Miami Heat win championships, and I'm sure Kevin Love is doing the exact same thing right now for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Without Bosch sacrificing his talent and play style, the Heat would not have been as successful as they were. Bosch really sacrificed the stat line for what he could have had had he stayed in Toronto for the better of the team. Had he stayed in Toronto, no doubt, he would have had been a dominant force in the NBA for many seasons after 2010. But in a counter argument to that, it was his choice to move to Miami and win championships. I'm just saying that without Chris Bosch sacrificing his own numbers, his own stats, his own play style, and playing more of a shooter, then there is no doubt Miami would have made four straight finals and this is coming from a Miami Heat fan. And I'm not your regular Miami Heat fan. I'm a really strong Miami Heat fan. And for those that have been subscribed for a while, you know how much I love Miami, LeBron James, and Dwayne Wade. And lastly, one more thing about Chris Bosh and his role is that not only did he have to change the way he played for the better of the team, but he also had to play out of his true position. Chris Bosh was not a center. He had to play center when the big three came to Miami. The Miami Heat tried to surround the big three with big men inside, but no one would trade with them. They tried Greg Oden, they tried Chris Anderson, but it was obvious, they weren't starting centers in the league. Bosch instead would have to play center and would play out of his true position. It probably benefited Miami more that Bosch played at the center position, but it made his case for being soft more apparent to the media, resulting in an untrue public opinion on Bosch. Lastly, there's a reason why you never see Chris Bosch or Kevin Love banging down low anymore. Because that's not what their role is anymore. So, we've discussed the role that Chris Bosch had to play, we've discussed the sacrifices he's had to make, we've discussed the LeBron James style of basketball and how it affected Chris Bosch and his play style. Now it's time to talk stats, comparing Bosch with some of the other NBA greats. Okay, so I'm going to put two sets of players and flash two sets of numbers on the screen. I want you to tell me down below in the comment section, literally right now, I want you guys to go down below to the comment section and type who would you rather have. Alright, are you ready? Player A, 24.6 points, 8.9 rebounds, 0.8 blocks in 36 minutes, and he was aged 28. Player B, 24 points, 10.8 rebounds, 1 block, 36 minutes, and aged 25. Alright, I'll wait. Go down below to the comment section and type who would you rather have, player A or player B. Ready? Who are you taking? I will say this, one player was an MVP and the other player didn't make an all NBA team that specific season. Are you ready? Okay, 
Player A is Dirk Nowitzki. This was Dirk Nowitzki during his MVP season. Player 2 is Chris Bosh. He didn't make an All-NBA team. Not the first team, not the second team, not the third team. Pretty crazy in my opinion. Now, I won't lie, and I speak truth on this channel. When Dirk put up these numbers, he won the MVP, which was the 2006-07 season, because he led his team to a 67-win season. When Bosch put up his numbers of 24-11, and 11, the Raptors didn't even make the playoffs. Now, there are two reasons why. Number one was Chris Bosch was injured towards the end of the season. Had he played, they would have definitely made the playoffs, because I'm pretty sure from memory, they were only one game out of the playoffs in that specific season. So, had Chris Bosch played, they definitely would have made the playoffs. Reason number two, Bosch didn't have the teammates around him like Dirk did. Dirk had Josh Howard and a good version of Jason Terry. Whilst Chris Bosch's best teammate was Andrea Bargnani. Like, really? Really? <laughs> now, I don't think the Bosch should have won the MVP. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying anything remotely close to that or anything like that. What I'm saying is that a stat line of 24 and 9 will win an MVP one year, and a stat line of 24 and 11 won't make an all NBA team. That's just crazy to me. Let me know how you think about that scenario in the comment section down below. Anyway, that's why I think Chris Bosch is one of the most underappreciated players of all time. And so, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, I was able to change some of your guys' opinions on Chris Bosch. And if you enjoyed the video, it would mean the world to me if you could hit that subscribe button. Literally. Just go down there. It takes two seconds. Hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on this channel. I make a whole bunch of NBA videos and I'm preparing some pretty cool what if scenarios that I don't think you guys want to miss out on. As for all of you that are currently subscribed, I appreciate all the support that you guys show in every single video. And let's see if we can smash 2,000 likes for the next video. That would mean the world to me. 2,000 likes and I'll upload the next video immediately. And also, before I forget, if you like NBA 2K17 videos, I have another channel. I'll link down below and I'll put it in the comment section. I post daily NBA 2K17 content on that channel. And I just uploaded the most insane New York Knicks rebuild that I don't think you guys want to miss out on. So yeah, go check it out. Link's down below in the description box. And yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and I'm out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.